came by to see Brooke. No. Not today. As far as I'm concerned, after that last little stunt you pulled with your ever-ready jet, you're not going anywhere near Brooke. Uh, ten, ten. Today is a crucial day for Brooke. She's gonna need to see as many friendly faces as possible. I agree. That's why she's not gonna see yours. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I'm not leaving until I see her. Let's get one thing straight, Your Highness. You're in my house. You don't own an inch of it. Not in it, not around it. As long as you're on my property, you'll do what I say, and I say you get the hell out. Why don't, why don't, why don't you stop pushing me? Listen, Tad, I appreciate that you're just trying to protect me, but I don't need protection. Not from Dimitri, anyway. It's highly debatable. And if it's all the same to you, I'd prefer it if today went off without a hitch. So would I. Me too. Well, then why don't you slither out of here and meet us at the courthouse? You can wave from the back of the room. No. Oh. No. I want Dimitri here. All right. Today's about you, so I guess it's fair that you should call the shots. And for some reason, it makes you feel better to have him around, then so be it. But I'm not leaving the two of you alone until I've got you seated safely next to Trevor, okay? Look, look, look Ted, Brooke wants to give the great American legal system a chance I won't interfere. Well, that's mighty big of you. I'll be back. We'll be here. I'm counting on it. I'm very glad that you risked being blinded by the paparazzi to come here today. I wanted to make sure you were all right. How about you? I mean, you're, you're testifying for the defense today. How, how do you feel? Well, like I've had enough warm-up time. I mean, the last time I was in that box, the prosecution had my hands tied. I'm to come out swinging. Listen, <laughs> do us all a favor and... Keep your cool, okay? And don't punch McLean if he asks you a question that you don't like. I won't. I won't. Be, I can be persuasive when I have to be. Yeah. I know you can. Mom, what are all those people doing outside? Oh, honey, they're, um, they're journalists and photographers. They just want to take some pictures of me when I go to court. I don't want you to go. Listen, listen. We talked about this last night, okay? I have to go. I have to be there. It's, it's very important. Then I'm going with you. Listen, sweetie. I understand. But you don't have to worry about me, okay? I'm going to be fine. Because I have your dad. And I have Trevor. And I have Dimitri. And Aunt Phoebe. And me too. Honey, you can't go. You can't, but it's going to be okay. It really is. Everything is going to be fine. I will be home for dinner just the same as any other day. But, Mom, this isn't like any other day. Uh, Jamie, you are absolutely right, because today you are going to be very busy at Wildwind. Wildwind? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you two. I arranged a party for you and Amanda Dillon at Wildwind. Swimming, horseback riding, tennis. Do you play tennis? Yeah. And Peggy is cooking up the best picnic lunch, complete with chocolate chip cookies. How does that sound? Sounds wonderful. What do you say? You want to spend the day with Amanda? Yeah. Can Junior come, too? I don't see why not. We'll just call Dixie, no, okay? Leave, leave everything to me. The more, the merrier. Okay? Okay. All right, good man. Get your tennis racket, your swimming trunks. Peggy's going to be picking you up in just a few minutes. Okay. All right, hurry along. very sweet of you. Oh, I, I don't want you two worrying about each other. You're always thinking. About what's best for you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. I think it's time to go. I'm ready. Well, I'll go fish.
fix lunch while you kids go swimming. But he's got to wait now till the groom comes. He's a certified lifeguard, so you'll be safe in the pool. Amanda, why don't you show the boys where the games are? I'll check on lunch. Want to see a card trick my mommy taught me? Sure. Come on, Jimmy, don't you want to see? What's the matter with him? He's a little bit worried about his mom. She just went to court again today. I know how you feel. Remember when my mommy is in trouble? It stinks. But everything turned out okay for her. And I bet it'll be just fine for your mom, too. Besides, my daddy's working for her, and my mommy tells me he's the best lawyer in the world. So I'm sure he'll make everything okay. And my daddy promised he'd make sure mom wouldn't go to prison. My mom said she'll do everything she can. So see, a lot of people are pulling for your mom. There's nothing to be worried about. Everything's going to be cool. Brooke, uh, why don't you come inside? we got a few details we got to iron out. Sure. Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, I was subpoenaed. I'm testifying for the defense. You, you never mentioned it. Well, we never got around to the topic. No, I guess we didn't. Listen, I just want to say I'm sorry for what happened last night. I shouldn't have gone off on you like that. No, you don't have to apologize. Uh, I mean, I, I was stressed, too. I... I I gave some thought to what you said. You know, you were right. I think it's best to leave things polite and civilized, you know. Some stones are better left unturned. Dad, I wasn't trying to brush you off. No, I didn't say you were trying to brush me off. I'm saying you're right. We're divorced. It's over. I guess it's best to let things rest in peace. <laughs> Fine. I, all I'm trying to say is I'm not... I wasn't trying to blow you out of the sky, that's all. I didn't think you were. I just thought you were being practical. Well, you were always better th at that than I was. Listen, good luck in there, okay? This guy McLean, he's a bit of a bulldog, but something tells me you should be able to hold your own just fine. Thank you. I'll do my best. Are you coming? Yeah, I'll be in in a minute. I'm just having a bit of a hard time getting revved up for this. I'm beginning to think it was a bad idea to drag Brooke back from the Ukraine. You worried about keeping your promise to Jamie? I'm running out of ideas, Dixie. And I'm running out of time. You'll come up with something. You always do. Guys, they're bringing the jury in. Common Pleas is now in session. The Honorable Judge John Foster presiding. Please be seated. Good morning. I trust everyone is well today. Since there's been an unexpected time lapse since we last convened, I'd like to remind the jury that they are to disregard anything and everything they might have heard or read about this case outside of this courtroom. That said, we will proceed with this trial. Mr. Dillon, are you ready? Approached, Your Honor. Mr. McLean, very well. Your Honor, because of the time lapse, I'd like the opportunity to remind the jury of the prosecution's testimony they've heard thus far. Uh, Your Honor, that's for closing arguments. If McLean here gives the home a gill, it's like getting him getting two bats to my one, plus we'll be here forever. I'm inclined to agree. You'll have your opportunity to summarize your evidence during closing arguments, Mr. McLean. Now let's get moving, shall we? Proceed with the defense's case. That was a nice try, though. The defense calls as its first witness, Ms. Dixie Cooney.
spoke English call to request a favor of you, a very important favor. This is about six months ago. Do you remember that call? Yes. And what was the call about? Brooke asked if she could send her son, Jamie, down to West Virginia uh, to stay with me and my son for a while. How did that strike you? It was a little odd. The school year was in full swing. But then Brooke explained that she was in the process of investigating an important story and that she was worried that the subject of that investigation would pose a danger to Jamie. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Your Honor, I'm offering into evidence out-of-court statements by my client to prove her state of mind leading up to the death of Jim Thomason. She was basically scared to death of Thomason, that he would harm her, her child, her family. And since these statements are in support of a justifiable homicide defense, they follow a well-established exception to the hearsay rule. I agree. Object and overruled. You may proceed, Mr. Doom. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Cooney, what was your response to Ms. English's request? I said yes, and Jamie came to Pigeon Hollow to stay with us for a while. Did she ever mention who or what she was investigating? Yes. She said the subject of her investigation was one of Tempo's photographers, Mr. Jim Thomason. And while Jamie was staying with you at Pigeon Ho Hollow, did he ever mention Jim Thomason? Jamie was plagued by nightmares when he came to stay with us. When I asked him what was the matter, he said that he was afraid of Mommy's friend, Jim, that he didn't want them to get married. Why would he think they would get married? Because Mr. Thomason told him that they would, uh, against, you know, Brooke's request, without her permission. Later, uh, Brooke uh, told Jamie that she wasn't going to marry him, but Jamie was still worried. He didn't like his mother being alone with Mr. Thomason. Did Brooke ever speak to you about Mr. Thomason as regards to Jamie? Yes. She said that she didn't want Mr. Thomason to talk to Jamie on the phone at any time, and in, under no circumstances was uh, Mr. Thomason to see or spend time with Jamie. So as far as you know, Miss English and her son were both scared to death of Mr. Objection. Thomason. Counsel is leading the witness. Sustained. Miss Cooney, how would you describe how Ms. English and her son felt Objection. about Objection. Pure speculation. Overruled. They were both scared to death. How would you describe your relationship with my client, the defendant? It hasn't always been good. We were both... We were both married to the same man um, at different times, of course. There was a period of time that we were downright hostile to one another, but we, uh, we have worked all that out, and uh, we're friends now. Best friends? No, no, not really, but, but friends. Our, our sons are best friends. Would you ever have any cause to lie for or protect the interests of Brooke English? No. I have no reason to lie. I'm not lying. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. McLean. No questions at this time, Your Honor, uh, but I would like to reserve the right to recall this witness if necessary. Very well. Uh, Ms. Cooney, you may step down. Uh, since the prosecution may recall you later, I remind you that you're still under subpoena, so don't leave town. 